All right, in this problem, uh, we have this polynomial function. It's got a degree of 4, which is, of course, an even number. And its lead coefficient is positive. The most simplified version of that function that you can really write would be something, something like y equals positive x squared. That would also have a positive degree. That would also have an even degree with a positive coefficient. And hopefully we all realize that would give you this parabola that goes up on both ends. Well, since this is a, an even degree with a positive coefficient, its end behavior will be exactly the same. It's got some other stuff going on in the middle, but it's going up on both ends. So when they ask you, what's the limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity? That means when x is going far to the left, that's where x's negative infinity is, is off to the left, what's the y value doing? Well, it's going up, which is to say the y values are approaching their infinity. This is saying what's happening to the function when x is going to its infinity, which is far to the right. Well, the y values, as x goes to the right, the y values are going up to their infinity. So both ends are reaching up for the clouds. Both ends have limits of infinity. All right, then they switch gears a little bit and ask about positive roots and negative roots. Uh, we can use Descartes' rule to come up with the number of possible positive roots simply by counting the number of sign changes that there are in the function. Uh, well, I guess we want to make sure that our powers are in order first. We've got 4, 3, 2, power of 1, and a constant. So since everything's in order, we can just count sign changes here. There is only one sign change in the problem. Positive, positive, then to a negative. That's a, that's a change. Negative, negative. Therefore, there can only be one positive root. So Descartes' rule ties the number of possible positive roots and the number of possible negative roots to the function sign changes. Actually, the negative roots come from counting sign changes in uh, m of negative x, meaning we're going to plug a negative x in here, 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 and here, and we're going we're to rewrite the function. Now, the shortcut way around this is every time I plug a negative number in for an even power, the sign's going to stay the same. Because a negative times a negative, an even number of times, is just going to spit out a positive value anyway. And that won't change the sign. Multiplying by a positive will not change your sign. So this first term is an even power. Its sign will not change, even if you stick a negative value in for x. In the second term, this is an odd power. Well, a negative times a negative times a negative gives you a negative. So its sign is going to change. Next, we have an even power. Its sign will not change, even if you put a negative value in for x. Here, uh, we have an odd power, a power of 1. Putting a negative in for x will give you a positive result now. And then the minus 1 is a constant. It doesn't change at all. What we do now is we count up the sign changes in this new function. We start with a positive and go to a negative. That's a sign change. Later on, we go from a negative back to a positive. That's a sign change. And we go here from a positive to a negative. That's a sign change. So we do have three negative, uh, as many as three negative roots. Descartes' rule only tells you the most you could have. The three sign changes mean we could have at most three negative roots. We could also have, what you do is you keep subtracting two, because you could have a pair less. Uh, so if we, if we don't have three, we'd have to have two less, meaning there could also be one negative root. So when you use Descartes' rule, whatever the top number is, just keep subtracting two until you run out of, until you get down to either one or zero. If you're even, you should end with zero. If you're odd, you should end with 1. In this case, 3 or 1 is the total list of possible numbers. We've got all the blanks filled in. means we're done with the problem.